Hello, welcome everyone to anubautrainings.com. Welcome to this live demo video series on how to use SAP UI5 flexible programming model. In our last episode, we talked about how to use flexible programming model or what is it, why we need it. Then we discussed about setting up our development environment with a demo service for flight data model. In our today's session, we are going to learn how to create our first flexible programming model Fury app and add a filter bar building block. If you have not seen my previous video, I would request you to kindly check the description of this video to find out link for the previous video or the previous episode. So let's get started. I'm going to switch over to my development tool now. So let me go back to Business Application Studio and we will start creating our flexible app. So first let's choose the project folder and create a new folder called app folder and then we are going to create the application from template. So don't worry I'm not going to use Fury element directly I will be using the custom page template which will basically add a Fury element application which will wrap the custom application inside. So it's a it's a mix of both. So let's see click on create start from template. And now the system will propose me the templates to choose. We choose Fury application. And in the options, we will be choosing custom page because our goal is to fully customize the generated Fury elements application. So we come back and you can see here we have a option to create a custom page. We choose that. Click on next button. And now we choose our source of data and that's exactly the reason why in the last episode we set up our demo data model. So now last we will be we set up our, our service, demo data model which is locally so available is in the current project. So we choose the local cap project. It will scan through my local project directory and it will find the available Odata v4 service which is called Anubo flight repo cap. So let's choose that. And now we will select our service after choosing the project. So we will be choosing, of course, the travel service, which was generated in the last class due to Git pull. And now we proceed to the next step. So in the main entity, we will be choosing travel and proceeding further to provide the project attributes. So let me give the project attributes Anubhav flex app and I say my travel application with flexible programming model and we can just give a namespace com dot anubhav dot travel so we just also can configure the Fury Launchpad and advanced options. So we can configure the Fury Launchpad. Also configure advanced options. For example, the theming experience. We can also add the code assist library to our project. So it will help us uh, creating the code completion. So we can avoid Launchpad right now and we can finish. So this will now create the application in the app folder. And in just about a couple of minutes, you will see the all the application dependencies will get installed and the application will get generated. So by looking at it, you may feel it like a like a like application, which is a Fury element application. But if you go to the manifest JSON file, that's where the real magic you can see. So you can clearly find out that this application is basically a SAP FE core FPM. It's basically a flexible uh, it's a component which is provided by flexible programming model and it is wrapping our application under a fury element floor plan actually yes and it's wrapping something called a view and it, it has generated a view so this entire application is a fury element application and it has inside a view so whatever we would like to use from fury element framework we will be able to utilize because this application is inside the fury element building block Yes. So now the next important thing is we can just go ahead and open the view page source. So we can just right click on the app and say 
open the show me the page map so you will see what all the pages it has at the moment so it has just one custom page which is called travel mean and when you just click on the edit button you will know the view name which it has created voila you can see the view and basically this view is generated inside a directory called ext mean and under that system has created a controller and a view for us nice so more of a freestyle approach the way we look at a freestyle approach that is what it's, it shows me yes and then we can start adding the components here so now we can start the application of course so we can go back and say preview the application and i will choose the uh, second option which is called watch option why the watch option because you see it has got a additional parameter that parameter is basically uh, invalidating the cache you see sap ui xx view cache false so every time it runs the application it will invalidate the view caches and it will always load the caches from my static references in the business application studio so you can also see there is an error now error where, where the port 4004 is already in use so to solve this problem we press f1 and we search for ports port preview and we can see there is already a port i will choose this is the port which is already running so we need to unexpose this port so we can say unexpose or just choose port again and we have an option to basically uh, remove the ports or unexpose the ports yes. so we can we can remove the port so we can open the preference settings so basically we need to stop this port which is already running let me just see how to stop so basically the business application studio is running on top of a linux machine and already this port is used because we have already started the application before so now we're trying to start the application again trying to acquire the same port so we need to stop that process to do that we can either go to the previously executed process or we come here and now we first check the available ports available processes which are currently running at the os level so we run this command and you can see we have these following processes which are currently running and the one which we started few minutes ago was npm run start the process id is basically a unique id which will tell which process is this it's 442 and i'm going to now stop that process using the kill command 442 so this should now ideally stop the port for us for the application which we started earlier so after killing the process we can again restart our app so let's go back to the preview and we can say start my app again So this should now acquire the port again and try to start. You can see it is started and the application is launching right over there on the UI. So you can see the app is launched and it's very much empty. There is nothing inside this application like a freestyle application. So our next step will be to use the open guided development and include our filter bar to this application. So choose open guided development and we are going to include the filter bar as part of this application so search here in the guide to add a filter bar and you can see list report and if you come down you also see the custom page add filter bar as building block so i was telling you in the last episode that every part of your application is added as a building block over here so we can click on this and it has got two step process so step number one we need to include annotations so we will choose our cds file which is my uh, my application and then we will choose the service name travel service and of course we will choose the entity as the travel entity so this is where the annotations has to come from yes and then we are just going to proceed further to include the necessary annotation fields so let's add the path we will choose to agency and we will choose the agency id 
add another field so these are the search criteria based on which we will be searching our travel request so then we will choose customer and we will select the customer ID yes okay let's just say agency ID yes we will add one more field for the status so one by one all the fields I am including as part of our field list so basically this annotation will be generated in the system to show all the properties so let's add here the travel status and we will show the travel status code so these are all the different properties which we have included now in our list of the fields and you can see they will be eventually added right at the bottom so now we are good to go to click on insert snippet and you will see the necessary annotations will be created as part of the step number one so it is generating the code snippet to create the selection field annotation and annotating our annotation.cds file where it has added everything now if there is a bug you can see it shows like this so we need to fix it so let me just come back and use the control space here underscore customer ID to agency underscore agency ID so this way we can actually go ahead and fix also in case we find there are any discrepancies so travel status code so this is how we have added now our annotation to add the selection fields which will construct our filter bar now the next step is we need to go to add the building block for adding the puri element filter bar so let's go to step two we choose first our view name it's the main view where we would like to add it the block id we can keep it filter bar so that is okay then we will choose the service which is travel service of course we will choose our entity set as travel entity set in the list of entity sets and then we will choose here the qualifier as the selection field of course so this is the annotation which we just added and if there is any aggregation path we will choose that of course we want to add this filter bar component as part of content aggregation of my page inside the view so that we choose and it will automatically generate the snippet and we can just click on insert snippet to insert this code as part of our view control so this namespace is called macros namespace this is a new namespace introduced by SAP so here you can see the SAP Fury element macros and this is the building block I was talking about in the last class so the entire filter bar have been added here as a building block the application is already in the live loader mode so when you go back voila you can see the filter bar have been added with the necessary components are also attached so you can see this is how exactly we can actually see all our all our uh, filter bar components being displayed on the UI fantastic so that is how we can create our first building block as part of our first view and we can utilize the flexible programming model where we have these building blocks constructing our UI so with that I hope you enjoyed today's class to create our first application using flexible programming model and adding the view with the filter bar control in the next class we are going to conclude how to customize the filter bar component with extra capabilities which we would like to see stay tuned thank you so much once again for joining catch you up in the next episode have a nice day goodbye